Hi, welcome to the interactive course on aquaponic. Plants. Plants, are autotroph, this means that they photosynthetically produce sugar from, carbon dioxide, and, water. However, plants also need macro elements and micro elements from the surrounding soil or water. Nutrient release in aquaculture depends on the fish species, age, and size of the fish, and the composition of fish food. The water from the aquaculture usually provides enough nitrogen and also other elements for plant growth. However, the levels of potassium, iron, and sometimes phosphorus, are often too low, especially for fruiting cultures, and more intensive plantings. The calcium, concentration depends on the water hardness. If the fish sludge is not remineralized, this leads to insufficient release of phosphorus. The macroelements required by plants are nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. Nitrogen is important for enzyme and coenzyme production, and for the production of proteins, nucleotides and porphyrins like chlorophyll. The presence of nitrogen therefore stimulates the vegetative growth. Phosphorus is used for three main functions, structural function formation of nucleic acids and phospholipids, energy function, ATP and ADP, enzymatic function, coenzyme A. The sulfur is used for the production of sulfur-containing amino acids, cysteine and methanine, for the formation of disulfide bridges for the tertiary structure of the proteins, and for the formation of conveyor enzymes. Potassium functions as an enzyme activator, and regulator of the photosynthetic and protein synthesis processes. Magnesium is important as a constituent of the chlorophyll and as an enzyme activator. Calcium contributes to the formation of the tissues and to the robustness of the plant stem and roots. The microelements required by plants are iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, and molybdenum. They are important for many biological processes in plants, however only in very small quantities. Too high concentrations of these elements are often toxic. Iron plays an important role in the metabolic functions that involve redox reactions. It is present in the cytochromes, in the ferrodoxin and reductase. It intervenes in breathing, in the synthesis of chlorophyll in the synthesis of proteins and in fixing nitrogen in the nitrate reduction. Manganese has an important role in the redox reactions and is a major regulator of enzymatic action. He has role in photosynthesis and in the final stage of the nitrate reduction. Zinc is often a cofactor of the enzymes and intervenes in the synthesis of nucleic acids and of proteins. Copper is present in enzymes, involved in photosynthesis in the metabolism of the cell walls and in nitrogen fixation and protein synthesis. Boron is involved in the meristem growth phase and in the transport and utilization of carbohydrates, also it participates in the synthesis of protein and the metabolism of nucleic acids. Molybdenum occurs in enzymes important in the nitrates reduction, and in nitrogen fixing. Electric conductivity, EC measures a material's ability to conduct an electric current. Because the electrical current is transported by the ions in solution, the conductivity increases as the concentration of ions increases. In hydroponic, the electric conductivity is recommended to be between 1.5 to 4 millisiemens per centimeter. However, EC levels between 0.5 to 1.5 are usually applied in aquaponics thus reflecting generally lower nutrient needs. To determine the precise amount of a specific element present in solution, chemical kits can be used. Also, aquarium supply stores have some simple analysis kits that can be used by a backyard aquaponic grower. Because hydroponics systems use water instead of the soil, it is necessary to add nutrients required by plants to the solution. This is done by adding fertilizers. A555 fertilizer will provide the nutrients all plants need for healthy growth. The three numbers that you see on a fertilizer label, such as 555, 
tell you what proportion of each macronutrient the fertilizer contains. The first number is always nitrogen, N, the second is phosphorus, P, and the third is potassium, K. This NPK ratio reflects the available nutrients by weight, contained in the fertilizer. Otherwise a mix of different fertilizers, liquid and in powder, can be used. The fertilizer mix needed in the systems, can be added in the system's water. After weekly tests, you could use a program, like Hydrobody, to calculate the total amount of nutrients, needed in the systems. Nitrogen Deficiency The plant is light green. Lower leaves are yellow, the stalks are too slender and blossoms are falling down. Phosphate Deficiency The plant is dark green, leaves have red or purple discoloration, and there is reduced growth. Magnesium deficiency, lower leaves are chlorotic, leaf veins remain dark green, and yellow spots appear on the leaves, which later become necrotic. Potassium deficiency, chlorotic leaves appear, and leaf margins dry up, starting at tips. Calcium deficiency, young leaves are hooked in form, necrotic margins only on young leaves, and there is blight on young leaves. Iron deficiency, new leaves develop light yellow color, almost between veins, later entire leaves become yellow. Aquaponics is an independent ecosystem with different zones of plant growth. The media host microorganisms and small insects, either with beneficial, neutral or harmful effect for the crop. In contrast to the conventional cultivation systems, where the use of chemical pesticides belongs to a daily routine, such methods are not suitable for aquaponics. Most of pesticides are toxic for fish, or other aquatic organisms. Also beneficial bacteria living in the system will be affected. So it is better to abstain from chemical products than to risk fatal consequences for the whole aquaculture system. Thank you for your attention. Hydroponic. Usually we are accustomed to seeing the plants grow in the ground. It is simple, to grow, a plant needs, a soil, sunlight, and water. In recent years, agriculture has taken steps to say the least. Plants always need sun and water, the difference is in the absence or another substrate where roots are grown. This technology is most often used in the Netherlands, Spain, France, New Zealand, and so on. In Switzerland there is at the moment around 110 hectares, where the crops are grown hydroponically. Hydroponic systems are also one of the technologies which is still on top of the list for space projects. Why are people using the hydroponic technologies? According to the literature, with the usage of hydroponic technology yields can be increased. Soil-borne diseases are avoided. Systems are much more efficient with water resources especially in arid areas. Control of plants during the crop development is much easier. It allows growing at locations where it is not possible to grow plants in soil. Where do the increased yields come from? In hydroponic systems plant nutrition can be optimized for each crop separately. Because of this the plant uses less energy to develop the root system and more energy to produce fruits. And also uniform plant development, synchronized harvesting. As said before there is lower pressure from soil pathogens or depending on the system there is not even a possibility to get soil pathogens into the system. Which are the best species that can be cultivated in hydroponics? Usually the experience show that tomatoes, green leaf vegetables, eggplant, peppers, melons, marrow squash and a lot of other products give good results in hydroponic systems. Tomatoes are one of the most popular plants grown hydroponically and can ripen as much as 8 weeks earlier and produce more fruits than when grown in soil outside in normal conditions. 
Hydroponic culture allows you to grow also fruits and melons all year round, no matter what the temperature is outside. But to be successful, you need to understand and pay attention to the growing conditions a particular fruit needs to thrive. Water-loving fruits make a good choice for your hydroponic garden. These include watermelon, cantaloupe, blackberries and grapes. Many hydroponic gardeners also successfully grow other, more exotic fruit species, even pineapples. Surprisingly, there are some trees that can be grown in a hydroponic manner. Banana trees are one, and dwarf citrus trees, such as lemons are another. There is almost an unending number of crops that can be grown hydroponically. Some of these include also corn, cacao, rice, tea, tobacco and cereal grains. In most cases these crops are started hydroponically and when the seedlings reach their desired size they are transplanted to the fields. We know different soilless cropping methods. Culture without a substrate so called true hydroponic, which is divided into nutrient film technique, raft culture, and aeroponics. And the substrate culture, which can be divided into non inert substrates and inert substrates. Non inert substrates are the ones that can affect the growth of the plants. Inert substrates are the ones that do not have any effect on plant growth. Substrates, if used, provide support to the plant and also a colonization surface for the microorganisms. Their metabolism influences the chemical composition of the cultivation water in many ways and contributes significantly to the treatment of the water. Nutrient Film Technique, NFT, was developed by Dr. Alan Cooper in the 1970s. NFT uses a thin film of nutrient water flowing down a narrow channel, with plant roots partially in the water film. It has advantages over raft and gravel bed systems, such as the ease and the convenient price of construction, and the lower weight of the components. Properly constructed and operated NFT can sustain very high plant densities. The oxygen demand is covered by roots that develop on top of this layer and are therefore in contact with the air. When developing optimally, the roots form a tight network which provides support to the plant. However, NFD has not received much research attention in aquaponic systems yet. Here are two examples of the NFT usage in practice. Floating raft culture is a system with floating plants on top of the water allowing the roots to hang down into the water. The most common method is to grow the fish in a fish tank and pump the water through a filtration system, and then into long channels where floating rafts filled with plants that float on the water's surface. The rafts have small holes where plants are placed into net pots. The roots hang free in the water, which is approximately 25 to 30 centimeters deep. It is possible that we lift the rafts for few centimeters above water level to provide additional oxygen for the roots. Raft culture system is easy to set up, has a buffer and there is no danger of clogging, but on the other hand there is a need to supply additional oxygen and the basins can become dirty with a lot of sediments. Here you can see two examples of the raft culture with salads and tomatoes. Aeroponics is the process of growing plants in an air or mist environment without the use of soil or an aggregate medium. The naked plant roots are sprayed with the nutrient solution. Usually it is used for potato production systems. Pots are filled with an inert medium which anchors the roots, and functions as a temporary reserve of water and solvent mineral nutrients. The system works by temporarily flooding the grow tray with a nutrient solution, and then draining the solution back into the reservoir. This action is normally done with a submerged pump that is connected to a timer. Periods of flooding may vary from permanent to periods of a few minutes depending on the cultivated plant. This method was mainly used in the late 1930s to 1950s. Today, it is mostly used for ornamental plants and fresh salad production. Last but not least, monitoring in the systems is really important. 
checking of the pH, oxygen concentration, water temperature and electrical conductivity should be checked on a weekly basis. Important part is also to analyze the nutrient contents in the system water to provide optimal conditions for the plant growth. Nevertheless, optimal climate conditions are secret of all greenhouse farmers but there are some approximate values of temperature, humidity, CO2, ventilation, which can be found in literature. Thank you very much for your attention.